Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today I'm at Tuttle Educational State Forest, where we're going to do a park activation. But first, I'd like to thank my Patreon and Coffee Fund supporters. Thank you so much for the support. As you know, I do not run ads on YouTube. I turned off monetization on YouTube. So uh, Patreon and Coffee Fund are a great way that you can support me in what I do here. But as I always say, if you're saving up for your first transceiver, you're on a fixed income, or you can't afford to do that, don't worry. My stuff will always be uh, free. But if you feel like contributing, um, I really appreciate it. Anyway, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous spring day here um, at Tuttle. And I am super excited to be here. The reason why is because if you've been watching my channel for very long, you'll know that I used to activate this very, very frequently. Um, Tuttle was probably one of the parks I activated more than any other for probably about four years. It was one of my top parks I activated. And all that came to kind of an abrupt halt in January when my mom passed away because I used to make it down to the Hickory area, Hickory, North Carolina, to take my mom to appointments and do some caregiving and stuff. And when she passed, I didn't really have um, that same uh, trip uh, each week to go down. Uh, my father, um, who actually I'm down here now visiting, um, he, uh, my sister now lives with him, so she's able to take him to appointments and things like that. I don't have to come down as often. And when we do come down, which we do about every week or two, um, it's usually the whole family and Hazel and everybody, and we're just doing family visits. We're not doing much of anything else, and that's where all the time goes. So I hardly have time to stop and do park activations when I do that. And... Uh, but I'm actually down here now, sadly, because my father's in the hospital. Um, he was admitted last night, and um, uh, before you ask, he's, he's actually doing a little bit uh, better right now. I'm sure by the time this video is out, he's probably doing fine. Um, they're, sta they're stabilizing him and stuff, and he'll probably be in there for at least a couple more days. But it is... Uh, <clears throat> I've been down there all morning. I'm heading back up to the mountains. And I carved out the time to do this activation. This will not be a long activation, but um, I just had to come out here to Tuttle. I just uh, had to do it. I, I really miss this. It's really funny, and I'm really curious if any other activators feel this way, but quite often you get so used to coming to a park maybe that you go to very frequently. And when, you, um, when your habits change or when you move or you do something, it's actually kind of interesting to um, get back uh, to a park you've been to before and it feels like you're coming home or something. It's kind of wild. So uh, that's the way I feel with uh, Tuttle. Um, I'd like to go do a hike today, but I don't have time to do it. This activation is probably going to be limited to about, hmm, probably about 40 minutes max. Anyway, we're going to walk on down here. I will tell you this, I had a comment recently, and I, I've gotten probably over the years, well, three or four comments to this, um, um, kind of on this topic, but uh, someone asked recently, you know, they were basically saying that they were disappointed I couldn't stay on the air and finish off a, a pileup that was uh, in place, and, um, and I hear you. I think as a hunter, you know, hunters are really trying to get out there and uh, work parks and in the, you know, in parks on the air, it's a very symbiotic thing, you know, uh, that uh, connection between hunters and activators. I mean, you really need both uh, to do it. Boy, especially in the early days, activators were really tight uh, with hunters because there weren't as many people on the air. The, uh, when you would hop on the air, you would have you know, maybe an hour, you were really happy if you could get 10 contacts. So back then, to get your 10 was really kind of the goal, especially if you're going out of your way to activate a park. You kind of wanted to validate it. You need 10 to validate it in the POTA system. Uh, these days, it's pretty easy to get 10, um, at least here in eastern United States. It's very easy to get 10 uh, for the most part. Conditions have been really, really bad lately, so it's taken longer to kind of get contacts, but usually you can still get 10. But uh, I think this person was kind of upset because maybe even that particular day I was trying to work the, or I was, they wanted to work me, but I had to hop off the air 
after only like 14 contacts or something. And that's all, that's, I would love, I would really love to be able to work every single uh, person in a pileup. I rarely get that opportunity though. Um, so like it's, uh, I think people will kind of get this if they do both activating and hunting. But if you're only a hunter, you know, when you're hunting and like when I hunt uh, parks or chase summits uh, from home, I can fit that into my schedule pretty easily. Like if I'm making dinner, breakfast, if I'm having coffee, if I'm writing a review for a magazine and I just want to like set it aside for a bit and clear my head, I'll hop on the air and work some stations that are out there on summits and parks. And it's fun to do that. So you can just kind of anytime you want to pick it up, go for it. If there's a station you really want to try to work, you can be pretty persistent trying to work them and maybe chase them across the bands and that sort of thing. When you're activating though, you really do have to make time in your day to go somewhere like this, a beautiful spot like this actually, it's a privilege to do it. But go to a spot and um, set up and spend time here. And some people who are retired or just have really flexible schedules can spend a long time in a park. And I'm envious of that, <laughs> to be honest, I'm very envious. The only time I really get a chance to do that and to finish working pileups is when I'm camping at a park site that happens to be an entity uh, in the POTA system. Um, then I get to actually spend a long time and, and work as many contacts as I want to. But that's pretty rare, you don't get to do that all the time. Um, and really activators like me that aren't retired, you know, we have uh, busy family lives and my family gets my attention first. Um, I always kind of give my family priority. And so um, in a lot of cases, I'm hopping off the air because I'm like today, I'm heading back up to my house uh, to have dinner with the family and, and be there in time for that. And, um, and visiting my dad in the hospital this morning. So I pushed this park in between there because this is kind of like my radiotherapy and I love doing it. So uh, just understand that if you're trying to work me or you're trying to work an activator that you really want to work or something and they hop off the air with a pileup still going, uh, please don't take it personally. It's just we kind of have lives and schedules, things that we have to abide by. And I can tell you that almost every park activator doesn't want to just stop at 10 or a little bit above it. We want to keep going, but we have to kind of abide by our schedules. So I don't want to take up too much of my schedule talking about that. Um, now we'll say one thing, there's a decent chance I will cough today. And I don't, you can't see this on camera as gorgeous as it is down here. It's so much greener than it is right now on the mountain, uh, right where we are at our elevation, I think at about 1000 meters or 3,300 feet at the QTH it's starting to green up a bit and we have some trees with leaves but i'd say we only have probably 20 percent leaf coverage on trees so far down here it's it's closer to probably 90 percent and man i'm telling you the pollen is out if you look on this table i kind of swept a bit of it off here but i'm sure my trousers are going to be covered in pollen there's so much pollen and i could actually as i was standing out there talking near my car i could just i could see pollen in the air and it is choking me up a little bit. So uh, I've got water. I should be fine. But uh, yeah, apologies in advance for the coughs because I don't have a cough button that I can press to mute myself like I can during a podcast or something. Today, I'm so excited. I brought my little Index Labs friend out with me, the QRP Plus. Looking forward to putting it on the air. And I hope I brought everything with me. I've got to be honest, I packed very quickly today, this morning, when I realized I could probably fit in a little bit of time. I had a friend that's picking up my daughters from school, so I didn't have to do it. And I thought, oh, this gives me an opportunity to fit just a little bit extra time in to do this activation. And I wanted to use the uh, QRP Plus, so I threw it in my red box here. And um, I hope the battery's got enough charge and everything it should, um, because I've kind of been out of that more organized mode than I'm normally in just because I've been running around so much. Uh, but I look forward to putting it on the air. Now the QRP Plus, if you're not familiar with it, I've already done one activation video with it. Soon I'll do a getting to know you video uh, for this radio, but it doesn't have a built-in ATU. It doesn't have a built-in battery or anything like that. And I've decided I'm just going to pair it with a 40 meter in-fed half wave. I'm going to use my MM0OPX uh, Collins in-fed half wave that I trimmed out and added a 40 meter in-fed half wave wire to, so it's like 60 plus uh, feet of wire. 
and um, we're just going to hop on the air and uh, play a little radio. By the way, someone also said, please don't move the camera as quickly. <laughs> I try not to do that. Um, it is difficult when I'm looking around and I'm using the camera as I look around for tree limbs and things. Um, hmm, I think I'm just going to step out here. I probably, I know I've, I've activated this same site before, but I think I'll probably st step out here, try to launch a line as high as I can. Though I got to admit, there aren't, I do this all the time when I lean back, my sunglasses fall off. Let's just take all the glasses off. There we go. I really need to find a limb like maybe on this tree right here because you don't want to go to the ends of each branch. You can do that. And with a, you know, with a, uh, an antenna like Collins here, the way, at least the way I've built it out, just using some wire, the wire is pretty easy to run through any tree and it's not heavy. So you don't need a thick branch, but you also don't want like the wind to knock it down while you're operating. So I'm trying to look for a limb that's high enough and that also uh, will serve me well. So let's, let's get this going. Uh, first of all, I need to grab my <clears throat> throw line and I'll try to set this up so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. <laughs> and I'll shoot the line toward me here. So I'll set the camera up back this way. Hopefully you can see me as I do this. If not, hey, that's almost a bonus, isn't it? <laughs> One really needs to see me do this. Ah, but this is part of the fun of doing POTA. So let's hopefully you can see me out here. Let's see if we can maybe get this in at least three throws or something. Let's go for it. <clears throat> oh, I can tell I'm going to lose my voice probably. Tuttle is so, it is just such an ideal park for doing POTA. It really, really is. There's just all these places. There must be 30 sites around here that I could set up that are all excellent sites. That's why I love this park so much. Okay, where did the tree go I was looking at? Ha, I can't see it now. <laughs> um, I'll just back up and uh, aim high. That's what I'll do. Oh, I see it. Okay, yeah, I do have to back up pretty far to do this, but I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can make this work. Aim kind of high. Let's make sure this bag's all the way open so the line wants to flow out freely. That is an important aspect to this. Okay. Still not the way I want it to be. Come on, stand up. There we go. <sighs> okay. I don't even know if the camera can see me right now, but here we go. There we go. Ah, wrong way. Nope, that did not do what I wanted to. <laughs> it just like really veered off on me there. I can't blame the wind either. It's not that windy today. <clears throat> Let's grab this and give it a go again. As I've said so many times before, if you're new to using a throw line, don't get frustrated by this. This is an opportunity when you throw it incorrectly or you don't get the branch you want because it's so much fun. This is part of the fun of doing an activation. Now, always make sure you're putting antennas in trees at parks where they really don't mind that. Some parks do not like it. So always make sure. Here at Tuttle, they have literally told me I can put up any antenna I want to, take up as much space as I want to, as long as there's not a school group here that I'd interfere with. And <laughs> they couldn't be more accommodating. So let's see, okay, come on. There we go, now that's much better. Oh, perfect. Now, let's see. I will have to use, run my uh, throw line out a little further. I'm not my throw line, sorry, my, uh, did I bring enough? See how long this, uh, see how long this uh, cable assembly is. It's not super long. Okay. Set this here and I'll see where I can put the base of my antenna. 
Sorry, I'm so far away. Oh, this works out perfectly. This will be fine. This will work just fine. Let's bring the camera in a little closer. Here we go. Also, right now I'm getting ready for Hamvention. Got to prepare a presentation. I'm doing for four days in May. Looking forward to doing that. Need to practice my presentation a bit. I am one of those people that I don't care if I'm doing a presentation for an amateur radio club with four people or I'm doing one to a group of hundreds. I always prepare my presentations. I don't like to go in unprepared. And so I always work on them and make sure I know them really well. And I'm excited about the one I'm doing for four days in May. It's kind of funny. I'm talking about it now. I don't, this video will probably be out before I go to Hamvention and four days in May. So, um, but basically, I'm doing a non-technical topic that I hope is kind of fun and people enjoy. There we go. Make sure all this is nice and tight because I'm using BNC adapters on this particular cable. This will almost be a 40 meter vertical in fed half wave. As I pull this up, did that not? I didn't hook up the end of the antenna. Can't believe that. I can't believe I did that. Well, unfortunately, I didn't pull the line back out of the tree. Although that would open up the opportunity to do another throw. Okay, I'm doing this line wrong. I think I mentioned last time, I have a certain muscle memory that I uh, get used to with my knots. And if I get thrown off of it, I kind of get confused about my knot. There we go. I think it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit today. Really nice weather. Oh, okay, the good. This is coming back down. This is going to be like a a little bit of an inverted V-ish shape. Now, I think, hmm, no, I think I'm gonna get my throat weight to put a little bit of tension on the line to hold it up. Go ahead and do that. I just use the weight as like a little bit of, give it a little bit of encouragement to be at about the height I want. There we go. Yeah, this is nice. There we go. That holds it about right. Okay, I think we've got an antenna up in the air now. I'm taking my time putting up this antenna. For this activation, I realize, if I'd have been in a hurry, I could have done the antenna much more quickly, but. I don't know, maybe I just need to enjoy the process of it today. Even though I, I am on a schedule still. Oh, let me see, I've got to make a place for this uh, tripod to, there we go. Okay, tripod, do your thing. There we go. Okay, pull out the one foot that's underneath the uh, Index Labs radio. I just hope the bands are okay. The bands have been really poor lately. Numerous people <laughs> I've seen who've been out activating have complained about the bands. They have not been ideal. Just lots of, you know, and I think the last time I went out a few days ago, what was it, Tuesday? Thursday, was it Tuesday? Maybe I did do an activation on Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, you know, there's a lot of QRM, oh, excuse me, QSB uh, that day. Whoa, this isn't the right, what am I doing? I am doing this completely backwards. I did this last time too. The barrel connector goes in the back of this radio. 
<laughs> the Anderson power pole goes onto the battery. And let's see if we got some power. Good, that's a good sign. <clears throat> now I need uh, I need a key. Um, let's see what kind of keys I have a selection of here. Oh, I know what I wanted to use. Did I bring it with me? I kind of would like to use my. Um, I don't know if I've done this before. Maybe I, maybe I have done this before. I'd like to use my VK3IL pressure paddle if I brought it, but can't remember if I actually threw that in the bag uh, for this activate. Oh, I did. Good. That's this pressure paddle. I kind of like this one. And put this in the key spot. That is, there's one peculiar thing with this radio, though. Mm, I was afraid of that. Um, this radio, oh, nope. let's see if it'll do it. The, the plugs for this are like countersunk a little bit. And some of my, uh, keys do not allow it to sink in enough to get both, to get all the content. Oh, this one does though. Good. Uh, some of my keys don't, don't, uh, fit in there very well. So stick this. I have this other mic here. I don't know if I really need it or not, but okay. Let's get it out and do this. Tempted this time to do like I did last time and not try to live log it in my um, Hammers app and just do it later. I kind of regret it when I do that. Sorry, I'm just trying to fiddle with the I love this new tripod, but it is a little weird sometimes trying to get it to stick in place the way I want it to, but the size and the quality are excellent. Otherwise, there we go. I think you can see everything here. Just need to move all this stuff out of my way. I need a little bit of elbow room to do CW. <clears throat> here we go. You know I'll just start here on the fresh page. U.S. 4861. Fortunately, I remember all that. Today is the 25th of April, 2024. In three weeks, I'm going to be at Hamvention. That's hard to believe. I will be there, um, by the way, if you happen to be at Hamvention and you want to pop by and say hi. When I'm not out gallivanting around, I'm going to be at the Ham Radio Workbench Stroke um, Halibut Electronics booth indoors, and um, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be in there, kind of uh, helping out Mark in Six MTS um, uh, with his booth, and uh, uh, being there if he needs to take breaks or visit with people or whatever. Uh, but I'll be all over the place when I'm there. I'll be there probably all day Friday and Saturday. I'm not sure if I'll be there Sunday. I may take a break and go do some poda on Sunday with friends. Um, instead of that. Oh, by the way, in case I didn't mention it, I could get a phone call, and if I get a phone call, I may have to answer it because uh, I'm expecting a call from my father's uh, physician there at the uh, hospital. So if I get that, I'll just have to pause everything and turn off the camera for a moment and come back. Okay, what was I looking at here? Oh, yes, okay. Tuttle. Educational. State Forest. And um, I'm using the QR... P plus MM zero OPX. I don't know exactly what that is. Now, where should I start? Should I try to do a little bit for kicks? Let's go up to uh, 10 meters, even though I don't expect much up there, to be honest. Where's my bandwidth? Ah, yes, I gotta change it to CW here. Let's make that a little wider. <clears throat> hmm, the fact I'm not hearing anything is a good sign there's nothing there. <laughs> oh, there is somebody. Okay, so let's just set up right here at, well, let's make sure I'm not far enough. No, I think all this is fair game for uh, where people would expect you for a poda. Um, 
I don't expect to get any well in 10 meters, but let's try anyway. Okay, so 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we are at 20 hours. <clears throat> the keyer on this is a little weird. Eric said that it forces like this uniform, um, it's not like iambic. Um, and so it kind of screws me up a little bit. I get a little ahead of it sometimes. Okay, that one is basically a sacrificial CQ for the reverse beacon network. What I want to do is load up on the side here, if I can get it to work, I don't have a strong signal. Load up the POTA spots page and see if it spots me. If it doesn't, then I'll spot myself. When I said it doesn't do iambic, it does I the iambic in that you can squeeze to make like a C or um, an A, you know, like a, you can squeeze to do something like a C, right? Um, or a Q or a Y or something. Um, but it doesn't have a switched mode between like iambic A and B. Oh, it spotted me. Any 10 meter people out there? Oh, you sound great. Great to get your logs. The last time I used this radio, I paired it with the same antenna. I need to take a photo while I'm thinking about it, by the way. Let me do this. <laughs> there we go. Um, don't want to forget. Okay, good. Let's go back to the spotting page so I can kind of watch it. I'm 
I'm actually getting spots uh, on the RBN out in uh, Europe. I got one out in British Columbia too. Oh no, what's going on? I may have to do this again in a little bit. What happened was that wiggled out just enough from the back. There's an easy fix for that, by the way. I can just make a make or find a little, like, short one foot extension uh, that has a really narrow uh, three and a half millimeter plug to go in the back of this so it'll fit. Um, it won't move down to the 15 meter band so there's a little bit more room there. I can't toy too much in these bands that are not super productive because I will need to move on. There's anybody there. Thank you for that one uh, 10 meter contact there, WA7BRL. So 15 meters is also resonant on this tenor, antenna. speaking network. And the answer is yes, I am. Wow, I spotted by ZF9.
We must have some fading going on here. Oh no, did you disappear on me one more time? Gotcha. Got you. Nice. See logging. This this put activation brought to you by the states of Washington, California, and Texas.
us there. So let's move down to... Okay, nothing heard. Let me take a photo while I'm thinking about it. I think this is a very photogenic radio, too, in my opinion. I'm going to respot myself instead of even waiting on the RBN to do it. Let's see, let's put 14, 057.5, though that may not be super accurate because I haven't calibrated this radio, whoops, CW, there we go, so it'll take my spot, is there enough juice to do that in the internet? We'll find out, <laughs> I don't know if I did it or not. Let's see if it took my spot. Yeah, it did. Okay, wait. There we go. Ugh, I can't write today.
Okay, maybe I did do that. Let me see if I heard what I thought I heard. <laughs> it is him. Yeah, I thought it was Carl. I was completely going by the... It's going by his fist. I should have never done this. Sometimes the keying on this is a little bit funky for me, but but I get my I get my meaning across. Okay. 
I thought it was an N2, it was a K2. Strong signal. Oh, thank you. I'm just tinkering around with the scaff filter, that's all I'm doing. Okay, wait. Thank you. 
he is using the TR45L. Gotcha. Try that again. Sorry, I was distracted. I've got you. You're way down there. Got you. Oh, there we go. Okay, wait. Okay. I just missed that last bit. I <laughs> know, I got it too. There we go. Okay. Pedestrian Mobile.
Nice. soon though I need to go I think this may be my last contact I think I heard somebody in there, maybe. I don't know. Whew, that was a lot of fun. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead. Since I can, I am going to spot myself. Um, oh, that was nice of him. Um, uh, KMB here just said, uh, sorry, I'm still new at CW. You never have to apologize for that. Trust me, everybody has been new at CW. Everybody's been that way, but I thought you actually sounded pretty darn good there. There we go. Okay, let me just take a few photos here while I'm thinking about it. And... We'll be ready to go. I'll take some photos of my logs, especially since I, I take a picture of the tree and everything. <laughs> it's just, I want to have everything in my um, field report. Okay, let's take a picture of the logs here. So I've got that. Uh, whoops. I'm going to get my shadow in it. There we go. That's the first page, and here is the second page. I'm going to take a look at this really quickly before I start packing up. Yeah, I need to head out of here. I'd really like to be out of here by 4 o'clock, which is just in 15 minutes. I think I can do that. Um, so, yeah, looking at this, what do we have here? 10 meters, got Washington, thank you. Um, 15 meters, um, California and Texas were all right there. It's kind of funny how the pattern went. Um, 20 meters was sort of all over the place. Still got more Texas, Oklahoma, New York. Uh, New York had a big showing. Connecticut had a big showing, more than normal. Um, this is what I love about doing POTA. Wait a minute. I'm looking at the wrong page here. This is the right page. Um, I need to flip this over to look. There we go. Connecticut. Um, Connecticut, Connecticut. That's, that's more Connecticut than I normally get in uh, such a short activation. Yeah, very nice. And it's nice to get Louisiana again. I don't get Louisiana as much as I used to, it seems. Uh, so I really like that. And Pennsylvania had a good showing, too. That's what I love about this, though, like I was about to say. It's just fun to hop out and really never know what's on the air. There's just something nice about the mystery of, you know, what's, uh, what's what awaits you when you um, hop on the air and you're doing this sort of thing. It's just, there's a lot of fun uh, in there, so... For me, at least. Okay, let's turn this off so I don't actually transmit. And I'll show you again what I'm talking about here. See, if I pull this out, that's just barely holding in there. It's the reason why it was starting to send that. You can see there's just like a little bit of a recess there. It's just a couple of millimeters or something, but it's enough that like if you have a wide um, uh, barrel here or um, like the coating around it, it'll prevent that from going in all the way. Um, but I have some thin ones that go in really nicely, so, but I can't change that easily on this one, but I can make a little adapter or something, take care of that pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, pull this off here. This is easy to pack up because frankly, I just throw it in a box. I love the QRP Plus. You can notice that there's, the audio sounds pretty darn phenomenal on this radio. It's got to be one of the better sounding field portable radios out there because they actually put, you know, a great deal of time into making sure that the audio worked. You know, there's enough amplification out here in the field and everything. So it, it sounds pretty darn good. Um, you know, it's not, um, it's not a TR35L. Um, it's not a, an ICOM IC7. I mean, you're talking about 1995 tech here. In fact, I think this has the very first uh, firmware version 
uh, doesn't even have like the more updated firmware version on this radio. And so it's pretty impressive, you know, how well it does work. Sounds, I think it sounds great. There's a little bit of a ring that you hear in the audio. Um, I'm sure you probably heard that today. Get a little water while I'm thinking about it here. Hopefully this mic isn't picking me up swallowing that water, but anyway, let's go ahead and put up the antenna really quickly. I'll put together everything else in short order. Ah, look at that. You served me well, antenna. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is unhook the coax here. Oh, wait, first thing I'll do is take care of the <laughs> weight. And the reason why is because if I let go of this, if I don't let go of the weight and I pull off that coax, it could pull my antenna up really high. And the last thing you want to do is have to pull your antenna, the end, the transformer side of your antenna through a tree that's asking for all kinds of trouble. So that's the reason why we do that. I'll just throw my weight over there. We'll unhook this guy. I'll do my over under method, which is all, isn't always easy with this particular line because it's kind of stiff, but it's still, this line doesn't, to be honest, I hardly need to do it uh, with this line because it's so, it doesn't hold a memory very easily when you're deploying it. So it's not really a, it's not really a, an issue with this particular antenna. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So, but this netting, this, stuff that's around it is amazing and it'll prevent it from tangling or doing anything. I really like this coax when I'm doing poda. Now I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to use this with soda necessarily because it's just unnecessary but I use RG316 for uh, for soda and actually I use RG316 for almost everything. On occasion I like to use a little bit more. Here we go. Let's go ahead and put this guy up using my winder here, <laughs> my portable winder. Okay, let's take a little bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit more at the top. Let's do my figure eight method here. I think I can get out of here by four. That'll get me home, well, by 5.30. Hop on my exercise bike for 45 minutes. Maybe I'll convince my daughters to make dinner. I'm sure they will, actually. They never protest doing that. And then it's Star Trek night tonight. I just haven't decided which episodes we'll watch, but we're gonna watch some Star Trek tonight. We are a Trekkie family. And pull this off, and there we go. And I'll just take this little Velcro here, wrap it around the antenna wire, and Bob's your uncle. Just go on out here and take care of the uh, throw line now. Isn't this awesome? I've really thought about coming out here with a friend and setting up like a really big horizontal delta loop like I have at my house. <laughs> it just, it takes a lot of wire to do that. And uh, it's an antenna I would not use very often, right? I mean, let's face it. Um, how often will I actually throw a huge delta loop antenna up in the sky? Like, rarely uh, for a park. Now, field day, 100%. That's, I, I will go out of my way to put up a really nice antenna on field day. Those are fantastic antennas. If you have time, actually, I find that they're very stealthy. Um, mine at home, not that I need to be stealthy at home. I can put up anything I want to where I am. I'm, I'm a good four miles away from an HOA, <laughs> at least. Um, but uh, the um, thing about a Delta Loop antenna when it's horizontal like that, it's up in the trees, it really kind of disappears. Mine is fed with basically like a window line or ladder line, what do you call that stuff. Just the uh, stuff that you buy, you know, that's in rolls, but it's uh, twin lead at the right impedance. And it goes up to the delta loop, which is probably 65 feet 
off the ground and some really tall trees attached at three points. I'm about to pull it down. I wanted to do it this winter, but this winter went crazy on me. Pull it down and put it up at least four or five points. Make it kind of more roundish. Not that it matters that much, but it was the goal this year. And um, at the bottom of the antenna is where I have my ATU. So it's a multiband antenna. But I put the ATU at the bottom at the feed point of the antenna, which is the best way to do that sort of thing, especially when you're talking about a home antenna you're using all the time. It's better not to match up your feed line going out to the feed point of the antenna because I feed it with some really nice coax uh, from my radio room. And um, that antenna has served me so well over the years. It is omnidirectional, which I guess is a plus or a minus, I don't know, depending on who you are. Um, I, I don't know, I kind of uh, like having omnidirectional antennas as well. <laughs> this is just a bag of everything in here, including, uh, it's just, well, actually it's what I threw in when we went on our quick eclipse trip recently to Dayton. I just do all this stuff in the pack really quickly and took it along. So I made sure I had everything in case I wanted to switch around. I had grandiose visions of maybe fitting in a whole bunch of activations, but I wasn't able to do that because we had so much good family time. I didn't want to interrupt it. Um, even though, you know, we do, my family is very supportive of what I do. Super supportive. I couldn't have asked for better support. But the truth is, um, on vacations and things like that, I don't want to get in the way of other family plans that we plan to do. So, wow, this has been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate you coming along uh, for the ride. Um, oh, Tuttle, I wish you were a little closer to my house now. <laughs> I'm probably going to get out here like maybe four times a year or something now, which is sad. I used to love coming out here. I look at every one of these picnic tables, and I remember... I've never done an activation at that one, but I've done one there. I've done one here before. I've done one there. I've uh, done one up there and there a bunch of times there, uh, quite a few times here. And then all along the trail system and in the uh, covered uh, picnic shelter, this is just such a POTA friendly site. I love it. And, and it's almost like, you know, this is an educational state for us. So it's really designed for school kids to come and learn about forestry and things. So it actually is not a super busy park. The only thing about these educational state forests in North Carolina is their hours can be a little wonky. You really need to check the time before you come out. It changes per season and they're not always open when you think they're gonna be open. But other than that, they're wonderful. If you're an introvert like me, um, it's kind of nice coming out here and just having the whole place to yourself, it feels like. But my time is now up. I need to jump in the car and head back up to the mountain. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you again to my Patreon and Coffee Fund supporters. You guys are amazing and I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate all the support. I hope you get out to uh, get a chance to go out and play a little radio yourselves. Again, if you're going to be at the Dayton Hamvention this year, I will be there. I'll be at four days in May as well. Uh, pop by and say hello or something. I don't mind that a bit. Um, I'm, I'm not like, I, you won't see me carrying around a camera, like hardly ever. I don't really do that there. I've, as I say, I'm not a YouTuber really. <laughs> I know Kyle um, uh, has always joked with me about that, A, Z, or Z, but, uh, but I, I'm really not, I don't consider myself a YouTuber. Um, so you won't see me carrying around a camera or anything, unless I'm just doing something, something super special. Uh, so I kind of blend in, I think a little bit. Um, but I will be at the Halibut booth, the uh, Ham Radio Workbench booth. So I look forward to seeing you there. Again, thank you so much. And as my buddy John used to say, you can't sprinkle the perfume of happiness without getting a little bit on yourself. <laughs> Just be kind to one another out there. And until next time, seven twos.